Welcome to the Friendship Baptist Church in the Colony. I'm Senior Pastor Gregory C. Trotter, and I would like to take this opportunity to welcome you to our live streaming program here at Friendship Baptist Church. Let me take this opportunity to welcome you into our worship service. Our prayer is that you will be blessed and that you will receive that blessing that God has in store for you. So sit back and enjoy the worship service. We welcome you to the Friendship Baptist Church in the Colony. We ought to be right, lifting our hands, giving him the praise. We ought to be shouting because how good he has been to us. And as we begin our service today, let's keep that in mind. God has been too good for us to be quiet. We should give him our best praise. Let us bow in prayer. Father, we come to you today. Just thank you for all you've done. Thank you for waking us up with a regional portion of our health and strength, uh, protecting us as we travel here to your house of worship. Now, Lord, I ask that you would just clear our hearts and minds to be on one accord, praising your name. Whatever was within us not pleasing, Lord, we ask that you would just remove it. Father, I ask that you would just bless every song that is sung, every prayer that is prayed, and your preach word, O oh Lord. Help us, O oh Lord, be on one accord, lifting up and praising your holy name today. And let everything that is thought, said, and done be pleasing to you. For us in the precious name of Jesus Christ, do pray and ask it all. Amen. You know, in the hands of our deacons. Amen. Good morning, friendship. Good morning, friendship. This is the day the Lord has made, and we need and should rejoice and be glad in it. Can the church say amen? God bless you. God bless you. So wonderful to see you this morning. I'm so happy that the Lord has touched you this morning and brought you to the house of worship. So let's praise him this morning. We'll have the reading of the scripture, and then we'll go to the Lord in prayer. Good morning, church. I'm Deacon Prim, and I'll be re reading the scriptures, and the scripture that I will be reading today is the 100 Psalms. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that has made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter unto his gates with thanksgiving and unto his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. Amen, amen. Let the church again say amen. For he is truly good. If you don't know it, then you ought to know it. He's good. Do you think it was you that brought yourself here today? I, I, I can confess to myself it wasn't me. It was his grace and mercy that allowed me to wake up, open my eyes, and see a day that was not promised to me. And for that, I, I'm truly thankful. Uh, excuse me if I kind of get loose this morning. Uh, but uh, he's truly worthy to me to be praised. Uh, you may not see it in me all the time, but it's all right. I want you to know it's down within my heart. I I've got to praise him because it's him. Let's go to the Lord in prayer this morning. Dear Heavenly and Gracious Master, it's once more and again that we come to you with thanksgiving in our hearts. But Lord Jesus, we come to you with praise on our lips this morning. For we want to thank you, Lord Jesus, for allowing yourself to manifest yourself within us this morning. For Lord Jesus, it wasn't anything that we did. It was not anything that we said. It was truly your grace and your mercy that allowed this time and this moment to roll on just a little while longer. Lord Jesus, we're praying this morning for those that are here, and we're praying for those that are on their way. We're asking you right now, Lord Jesus, if it's your holy will to allow safe passage this morning. And Lord Jesus, we're praying for each and every church that stands open this morning in your name. Lord Jesus, we're asking you to please allow the service to roll on 
just a little bit longer. For we don't know how long we have here on this earth. We don't know how rough and tough the journey is going to be. But we know as long as we keep our hands in your hands that you will see us through. For Lord Jesus, we're praying this morning for the sick and the shut in. We're praying for those individuals that would like to be here but for some reason can't make it. Lord Jesus, we're praying right now. I'm asking you right now to lift them up, Lord Jesus. For Lord Jesus, we're asking you a special blessing for friendship this morning. For Lord Jesus, we know the trials and tribulations are on every hand. But we know that as long as we keep our hands in your hands, that it's going to be all right. For Lord Jesus, we're praying for the pastor this morning. Lord Jesus, take him down into the storehouse of knowledge. Lift him up, Lord Jesus, where he may be weak this morning. For Lord Jesus, only you know each and every heart. You know each and every desire. And we're praying right now, Lord Jesus, that you supply all of those according to your riches and glory. For Lord Jesus, we know that it's not anything or any one thing that we have done that allowed your grace and your mercy. But right now, we just want to take our time to say thank you. Thank you, Jesus. For Lord Jesus, we're lifting you up this morning. We're giving you all the praise and honor that you so desire. For Lord Jesus, we're asking right now that you prick our hearts this morning. For somebody here may be weary. Somebody here may be sad. But Lord Jesus, as long as you are in control, we know that you are going to make everything all right. For Lord Jesus, we're praying this morning that everybody in this world, Lord Jesus, that if they don't know you in the pardon of the sins, that they would come running. What must I do to be saved? For you're the only one that can get us back to the Father. For you said in your word, Lord Jesus, to trust in you. And that's what we're doing this morning. Lord Jesus, I'm asking a special blessing for this service this morning. Lord Jesus, I pray that it be all that you so desire it to be. And Lord Jesus, we will continue, continue to give you the honor, the praise, and the glory. And all these blessings, our son Jesus' name, and the church says, Amen. Y'all, come on, stand to your feet. Let's give God a hand praise, would you? Come on, we can do better than that. Amen. I know he's worthy. I know it's a little early this morning, but God is good. And he's not just good sometimes, he's good all the time, amen? Amen. God is a mighty God. Oh 
Friendship. Giving all honor to God, my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, Pastor Trotter, First Lady Sister Trotter, and all ministers of the clergy, these are your announcements for Sunday, July 26, 2015. During the month of July and August, we will not have Old Time Gospel Hour. Old Time Gospel Hour will resume in September. Wednesday Bible study will be at 9.30 and 7 p.m. Starting today, July 26 through August 1st, Youth Usher Convention, Sacramento, California. August 15th, Back to School Youth Rally, Health Fair, and Blood Drive. August 22nd, Women Enrichment Ministry Mother-Daughter Symposium, 11 a.m. until 1. 
August 23rd, baby dedication during 11 a.m. service, contact the church administration office to participate. All young adults between the ages of 17 through 34 who would be interested in starting a youth adult usher board, please be present at the Usher's August 8th meeting at 10 a.m. If you are interested and cannot attend this meeting, please contact Sister Betty Thomas. The food pantry needs your support. Summer is here and demand will increase over the summertime as children are home and do not have access to school lunch programs. August 29th. In accessory breakfast prayer, 9.30 a.m. Church announcements can be found in your bulletin, the church bulletin board, or you may log on to www.friendshipbaptistofthecolony.org. Please govern yourselves accordingly, Pastor Gregory Trotter and the body of Friendship Baptist of the Colony. And now, a thought from my pastor's desk. Keep your eyes on the objectives, not the obstacles. Thank you and have a blessed week. He made my he made my body hold. He laid, he laid his hands on me. Let me tell you, he laid on me. Yes, he laid his hands on me. Yes, he did. Hands on me. He laid, he laid his hands on me. One Friday night, dog. Hands on me. I was sitting. 
sad song people I don't know about you but I've been fixing myself to go home to be with Jesus because at the end of the day that's where we all want to go and I can tell you I'm all right with it I'm ready and I'm not sad I'm not depressed I just know where I'm at with God amen Simple song, you know, it's, it's about my father. We sung this before, but so many people came up and said it was touching to me. And it touches my heart because it changed who I am when my father pulled me to the side. Simply, my, my father was in the hospital. He had had three heart surgeries. And... The last time they wanted to do surgery, they said it would be too risky. And so they came in with the results. And they told my father that we don't think it would be good to have another surgery. We don't think that you would come out of it. Should bring it down, please. The first thing my father told me was, he asked my mom and my sister to go out of the room. And he said, son, a couple of things I want you to do. First thing is take care of your mother. And the second thing is be a good father. Right. And he told me this. He says, because I don't equip you with everything that you need. You may not see it right now, but when I'm gone, when you're going through your day-to-day -day life, You'll see the things that I've been teaching. You'll see why we've brought you to church every Sunday. See, when you're raised in the church, you won't depart from the church. No matter what you do, you'll always find home at the church. I know I got a witness out there. And I know it's 8 o'clock, but God is such a good God. And I just said that to say I had a super dad that gave me unconditional love. And I could hear my daddy saying these words. Son, do you remember when we rode from town to town? Even when you were small, you 
follow me around but now I'm in a place as beautiful as can be my daddy told me son take my advice and follow me what did he do say follow fishermen of men so the men they dropped their nets and they followed Jesus and I don't know about you but I want to be just like those disciples that followed Jesus because I want to go home and I want to see my father again listen son do you remember when we rode from town to town Even when you were small You followed me around But now I'm in a place As beautiful as can be Daddy said, son, take my advice and follow me but wait 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 listen as Jesus and the disciples was walking along Jesus saw some more men and Jesus told them come and follow me now I don't know where you are in your life but if you just hear the words that I say you have to have to change follow God's word he gives us the Holy Scripture he gives us the Holy Ghost and those are the tools that Jesus Left for us. Yes. We might not understand things all the time, but it's in the word. And the word don't change. Pastor teaches this all the time. The word will never change. One more round. Jesus said, Follow. Where the streets are paved with gold, follow me. Where you can rest your weary soul, we're going to a place as beautiful as can be. Son, take my advice and follow me. me.
Thanks so all. Oh, okay. Good morning, friendship. <laughs> Giving all glory, honor, and praise to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To my Savior and to the blessed Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit that leads me and guides me, that teaches me in all things giving honor to my pastor who is in his absence and his wife, Sister Doris Trotter, to all the leaders, the preachers, the ministers of the gospel, to the leaders of this church, and to the Body of Friendship Baptist Church. I've said, my name is Thadeen Hernandez, and I'm here this morning on behalf of the hospitality ministry, and I'm here this morning to welcome our guests. So, if we have any guests who is visiting with us this morning, we ask you to please stand and remain standing. First, I just want to um, apologize for being a little nervous. I'm really nervous. <laughs> but I just want to acknowledge you. We know that there are many, many churches in the DFW area that you could have gone to this morning. Yet, you're here worshiping with us. And we know it's the Holy Spirit that has led you here. And we're grateful to have you here this morning. Friendship Baptist Church is one of the most God-led, God-Bible-believing church. With my, our pastor read and teaches God's word from Genesis to Revelations. We just want to welcome you here, and we pray that you will be blessed by the word that you will hear this morning. And if you're ever in this area again, that you'll come and you'll visit with us. And in addition, if you're looking for a church home, we could not recommend a better church than French Baptist Church. We thank God for you, and we bless you this morning. Thank you. Uh, Friendship, please sign and welcome our visitors. Bible tells us in Luke 9, 1 and 2. Then he called his 12 disciples together and gave them power and authority over all devils and to cure diseases. And he sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. I am brother Dr. Philip Masterson. I'm here this morning on behalf of our health and wellness ministry. With the monsoon-like weather we had here in Texas this past May, many healthcare professionals were expecting an increased incidence of people infected with the West Nile virus. Fortunately, to date, there's been only one individual in the DFW area that has been documented infected with the West Nile. However, typically, these cases peak in mid-August. The West Nile virus was first reported in this country in 1999 in New York City. Today, the disease is mostly seen in the southern, midwestern, and western states, especially here in Texas. In 2012, there were nearly 5,700 reported cases of West Nile infections in the United States. Nearly 2,000 of these were in Texas alone. In 2013, the number dropped to about 2,500 reported cases. However, these numbers are misleading because many of us have probably already been infected with the West Nile virus and never knew it. 
This is because nearly 80% of all individuals infected with this virus have absolutely no symptoms whatsoever. Somewhere close to 20% or one in five individuals infected with West Nile will usually have flu-like symptoms. This consists of headaches, body aches, joint pains, vomiting and diarrhea, and perhaps a skin rash. Most people in this group recover completely, but some may have fatigue or weakness for several weeks following exposure to the virus. Less than one person out of 100 individuals who are infected with West Nile will experience a severe form of the disease. This consists of encephalitis or meningitis, which is inflammation of the brain and surrounding tissues. Symptoms in these cases may include a high fever, severe headache, neck stiffness, mental confusion, seizures, and perhaps paralysis. Unfortunately, some of these individuals die from their disease. Individuals who are at the highest risk of a severe disease from West Nile are people over the age of 75, especially if you have cancer, diabetes, kidney disease, or high blood pressure. There are no vaccines or specific medications that are available to treat infections with the West Nile infection. Therefore, prevention is the key. The most effective way to avoid a West Nile infection is to prevent bites from infected mosquitoes. It is recommended that you consider wearing long sleeve shirts and long pants and socks when outdoors. Use insect repellents containing DEET when you go outside, especially from dusk to dawn when mosquitoes are most active. Remove standing water from around your home where mosquitoes may breed and install and or repair screens on your windows and doors. Remember, until a vaccine becomes available, it is prudent to be aware of any West Nile activity in your community and use precautions to protect yourself and your family. Beloved, I wish among all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as I so prosper. Third John, second verse. God bless you. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. Good morning, friendship. It's a blessing to be in the house of the Lord. Let's give God a hand clap of praise this morning. Because of his goodness, his mercy, and his grace has had nothing to do with us, but only because of who he is. And his love showed up early this morning and touched us and got us into his house of worship. It is good for us to be here. I welcome you into this worship experience. For those that may be viewing via the internet, we welcome you also that you would still be able to praise and lift up the name of Jesus. Amen? Amen. 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 In the absence of our pastor and our first lady who have started their vacation, that is why that they are not here and they will be out all week. All week. So they needed that time to renew and refresh. Given that said, I know some of my early morning Bible students are not, uh, not going to like this, but pastor has, you heard me say pastor, didn't you? <laughs> because of what happened last week, how many enjoyed vacation Bible school last week? Was it not a blessing? 
it was a blessing and a big crowd, but because of that last week and everything that went in, the pastor has in all ministry meetings for this week has been canceled. Beginning tomorrow night through Saturday. Again, all ministry meetings are canceled for this next week to give everyone a chance to catch their breath and we will pick back up the following week, amen? amen? Amen. We also, you've heard the announcements. We ask that you govern yourselves accordingly. We have a few more weeks before it's time for our back to school rally, our health fair. We're gonna ask, and there's a table set up, and we mentioned this last week, there is a need for school supplies to help not only with our own children, but because this is a community-wide event to help others that may be in need. So we ask that you would stop by the table, pick up a list to bring some supplies in, or you can write out a check or give your financial donation so we'll be able to bless others on the 15th of August. Amen? Amen. 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 We want to keep in prayer as we continue to move forward. We're preparing for our officers to come. Brother uh, Gillespie, Elihu Gillespie, sister passed this past week, so we ask that you keep him lifted up in prayer. Funeral arrangements are pending. And then Sister Marion Brothers, a lot of us know her, she's a mature member, she's normally in the Wednesday morning Bible study, she had lost in her family also. So we're asking friendship to keep these two in prayer, amen? Amen. Amen. We're going to take it a little bit higher in our service. Now we thank the men for the music that they have rendered thus far. We're going to ask the officers to come, that they would uh, lead us into time to, for our giving, for our visitors, for our guests. We only do this one time. So it's our tithe and offering, our building fund, and those that would willing to contribute to their pledge. And you know who you are. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this offering that we are about to receive. We pray that it is multiplied through your hands, Lord God, that it do, do more than even what is given. In your son Jesus' name I pray, amen.
Amen and amen. You know, it's prayer time. Time where we've all had a long week and things have been on our hearts and minds. You know, you can start making your way to the altar if you choose to. There's, because some weight sometimes is just so heavy that we can't do anything but pray. You know, when mama is not there, friends are not there, no one we can talk to. When we're riding along in the car and the radio is on, and all you can do is call out on the name of Jesus. There's no turning back. You don't want to do the things that you used to do. You don't want the problems that you used to have. And you're looking for some kind of change. And the only change comes through the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, Lord, we ask you all, for all of you, to forgive us for our sins, dear Father. Lord, knowingly or unknowingly, dear Father. Lord God, someone here in this circle has fell all the way down on their knees, dear Father, that's come to the altar with burdens on their hearts and minds and those that are standing in the pews, dear Father, have come with something, dear Lord, in need of you, dear Father. Lord, only your grace and mercy can guide us through, dear Father. But Lord, we trust you, dear Father, to do what we come and ask in, in the name of Jesus, dear Lord. Father, for that body, dear Lord, that's aching, dear Father. For the pains that's going through our hearts, dear Lord. Oh, Lord, how much we need you, dear Father. How much we need you every minute, every second, every hour, dear Lord. Father God, because the doctor has told us something this week that we didn't want to hear, dear Father. But, Lord, you are the healer, dear Lord. Father God, something is on the job, dear Lord, that we didn't want to hear, dear Father, but Lord, you can fix it, dear Lord. Father, someone even lost their job this week, dear Father. Lord God, but you know you can open another door, dear Father, and help them to tell them to put on a new suit, dear Father, and journey their way in on a new job, dear Lord. Father God, we ask blessings over our pastor, Father, and his absent, and his wife, dear Father. Lord God, that you'll bless them and give them rest, dear Father. Lord God, we pray for the man that will stand in John's shoes, dear Father. And Lord, and preach your gospel, dear Lord. Father, we pray for everyone here, Father, and everyone that's on their way, dear Father. Lord, we pray that you'll move right now in the name of Jesus, dear Lord. Oh, Father, how much we love you, dear Lord. Father, we just ask that you just continue to bless your children. Lord, we are lost somewhere, but Lord, you have us, dear Father, in the palm of your mighty hand, dear Lord. So talk to us, Father. Lord, some of us are a little hard-headed, but Lord God, you and your grace and mercy can ease all of our problems and pains, dear Father. Oh, how much we surely love you now, Lord. How much we praise you now. And Lord, we seal this prayer in the name of Jesus. We love you, Father. Hallelujah to you. Amen and thank you, Lord. For those that came down and for those that stayed in the pews, we need to give God a hand clap of praise because whatever you are in need of, whatever you brought to this altar, just know that he has already have it under control. Would you continue to stand please as the man that I'm about to introduce is going to bring us a word from the Lord this morning. He is no stranger to us. He and his wife share in the co-laboring of the single ministry leading that ministry. I present the psalm and introduce the other, our speaker of the hour, Reverend Michael Burt. People of God said amen. amen. Have your Bible with us to very familiar passage of scripture found in the Gospel of Luke, 22nd chapter. Luke, 22nd chapter, we're going to read verses 
54 through 62. If you have it, say amen. amen. And it reads on this wise. Then took they him and led him and brought him into the high priest's house. And Peter followed afar off. They had kindled a fire in the midst of the hall and were set down together. Peter sat down among them. But a certain maid held him as he sat by the fire, beheld him as he sat by the fire, and earnestly looked upon him and said, This man was also with him. And he denied him, saying, Woman, I know him not. And after a, will, a little while, another saw him and said, Thou art also of them. And Peter said, Man, I am not. And about the space of one hour, after another confidently affirmed, saying, Of a truth, this fellow also was with him, for he is a Galilean. And Peter said, Man, I know not what thou sayest. And immediately while he said, while he yet spake, the cock crew. The Lord turned and looked upon Peter. Peter remembered the words of the Lord, how he had said unto him, Before the cock crew, thou shalt deny me thrice. Peter went out and wept bitterly. You may be seated. I'd like to put a tag on this text and talk about failure is not final. Failure is not final. To God our Father, to the Holy Spirit our company keeper, Christ our Savior to you, my brothers in Christ, and in creation, it's good to be here this morning. To the under-shepherd of this church, Pastor Trotter, in his absence, I want to thank him first off for the opportunity to stand at such an hour and a time as this behind the sacred desk. To his lovely wife, Sister Trotter, hopefully you two get some reflection and some rest because when you got back, when you get back, we know there's still work to be done. To my brethren in the ministry, labor with me this blessing and burden of preaching. We just thank God for what he's done through us all. Let us pray. Lord, we come to thee thanking thee for this another day. Lord, we are not a perfect people, but we serve a perfect God. But Lord, it's thy preaching hour, and we ask thee for preaching power. If I'm too far up, Lord, bring us down. If I'm too low, bring us up. If I'm too far out, bring us in. And preach to us and through us. That some woman, some little boy, some man, some little girl may come running, what must I do to be saved? Lord, we give it all back to thee. And because we do so, we say, we ask thee that the, that your word be glorified, the saints be edified, and that Satan be horrified. In Jesus' name we pray our servant's prayer. We thank God and amen. amen. It's been said you can take the boy out of the country, but you can't take the country out of the boy. But you would agree? We we'll also agree that there is a difference between the sounds we hear in the city and the ones you would hear in the country. Depending on where you live, there are some sounds you just don't hear that often. But in a large metropolitan city, you can hear almost anything. Automobiles, trains, buses, trucks, Sirens, whistles at a game, kids yelling, music blaring and blasting, planes overhead, and phones ringing, microwave, microwave bells going off. And I bet in the last few minutes, somebody received a tweet and you heard that unique sound meaning that uh, you've been alerted to the latest news in social media. But I want to know, when was the last time you heard a rooster crow? 
you don't, you don't see people in the city with a pet rooster walking them down the street, taking them to the park, or getting them groomed at Roosters or Us pet service. You normally find them in the country or a farm. If you heard a rooster crowing this morning, you had to be in the city. I believe roosters belong in the country where they can sound out just before dawn and wake those that are asleep with news that a new day has come to remind the kids to get up and do your morning chores. They are God's trumpeteers of the morning. Maybe you never heard a rooster cock a doodle do. But Peter knew all about roosters. You cannot live in an area like Galilee and not know about roosters because they were a prized animal in that day. He had heard roosters crowing since the day he was born. Over the years, he heard that sound a thousand times or more. But of all the times and of all the roosters, he only remembered one time and one rooster that tripped him up. Wait a minute, preacher. You talking about the devoted disciple known as Peter? Peter, the man whose bold words and actions had brought him to the forefront of leadership. Peter, the man who walked on water just like Jesus. Peter, the man who when asked by Jesus if he would leave, Peter said, Jesus, we have left all for you. Where will we go? Peter, the man who confidently proclaimed Jesus as the son of the living God. Peter, the man that had the nerve enough to challenge Jesus when Jesus had predicted his capture and ultimate death. Peter, the one Jesus rebuked as Satan. Peter, the disciple that declared in the, in the room around the disciples that he would not leave Jesus even if it meant his own death. Peter, the one who took action in the Garden of Gethsemane and, and because he had a sleeping response, not a praying one, tried to cut off the ear of the servant of the high priest whose name was Malchus. Yes, this is Peter who after Jesus was seized and took him away to the house of the high priest, Peter is following from a distance. Time won't permit to talk about disciples in the distance. We're here to talk about failure is not final. But Mark's gospel says it this way in Mark 14 and 15. He says they all left him and fled. Everyone but Peter. As I said earlier, Jesus had been arrested and the disciples had gone, scattered, drifted off into the darkness. They were too shocked and too angry by the actions of Judas. And know that and now that Jesus is arrested, they did not know what to do. Their plans had been ruined. A renowned boxer once said, everyone has a plan until they get hit. <laughs> Judas sells out Jesus, and it was a telling blow that they were not expecting. And it knocked them back to their old occupation. Let me set the scene. It was Thursday night in Jerusalem when they led Jesus away. And again, Peter decided to follow because he promised never to desert Jesus and this wasn't the time to start now. He was blending in well in the confusion. He was able to follow the crowd to the courtyard right outside the house of the high priest. By that time Peter got there, the crowds had somewhat dispersed. It being late and not much excitement, some had gone home. Others were warming themselves by a fire in the courtyard. 
It must have been early April, and the temperature had dropped. So the night air was cool enough for a fire. There were soldiers milling about, and server girls running around running errands. But there were passerbyers and people just hanging around. You know the noisy crowd. This is where Peter found himself. Those that just wanted to see what was going to happen to this fella named Jesus. Peter is now in the enemy territory. But it's the middle of the night. There is no reason for them to suspect him. So as he was warming his hands by the fire. Verse 55 says, Peter got comfortable and sat among them. And a certain maid or servant girl said, this man was also with him. You were with this Jesus from Galilee. These words hit Peter like an electric shock or a ton of bricks. Remember, we all have a plan until we get hit. And I've discovered that I just got hit.com can't help me. <laughs> Not in this situation. Peter must have thought somehow, how in the world did she recognize me? Peter had to, be think, had to think fast because, because he told no one about his plan, not even his disciples. How did she connect me with Jesus? Instinctively, he spoke the oldest dodge in the book. I don't know what you're talking about, woman. I, I, I don't know him. But further story revealed to me that these words that she spoke was not just a guess by the servant girl. Rather, they were a matter-of-fact statement. In other words, she says, hey, I know you the guy. I know it's you. You was one of Jesus' main men. In the original language, the word for maid means slave girl. And when a slave girl approached anyone, it was to perform her duties or to ask if they wanted anything. But here she makes a statement about Peter in public. Normally when, during that time, when anything a woman said, it wasn't taken seriously. And could not have, and you could have ignored her. Well, that ain't like that today. <laughs> but then it was. Peter must not have known he was or could have been the most popular disciple. Peter, you need to know, with popularity comes responsibility. You thought it would be died off or died down by now, but they remember. You ever tried to blend in where you know you did not belong? Because almost immediately, the Bible says, another one spoke up and said, thou art also of them. I could see the man standing up and walking over towards Peter as the wood in the fire was crackling. Peter was nervous and, and, and jumpy. And, and the man says, yeah, he was the Nazarene. He says, not only do I know him tonight, I recognize him as the one who caught off my cousin's ear in, in the Olive Garden. Peter's response as the first, I'm not the one denying any relationship he had with Jesus. Peter, now terrified, moved to another location because it was getting hot in here and it wasn't because of the fire. You ever been busted and embarrassed? So much so you wanted to just disappear? But after an hour, the Bible says, another spoke up saying, this man also was with him, for he too is a Galilean. And the reason he said he was a Galilean because his accent gave him away. And if you read in Mark's account, chapter 14, verses 71, the Bible says, this last time, 
that Peter began to curse and swear, saying, I know not this man. Umpty, 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 up. <laughs> when a man is backed in the corner, he will do almost anything to save himself. <laughs> now, how many Christians, if you catch them at the right time and at the right place, will curse you out? <laughs> hey. <laughs> Peter, you can't run with the hare and hunt with the hound. Peter, don't you know the devil's hound runs in packs? And the text says immediately, why he spake, the cock crowed. That brings me to my first point. We won't be long this morning. The first point is Peter experienced an unforgettable sound unforgettable sound. The rooster crow is a reminder of something you did so repulsive, you thought, so uncomprehensible that you cannot forget. That's how Peter felt days after the cock had crowed. And that's because Peter did what he said he wouldn't do, and that is deny Christ. And he did not do it in private. But he did it in public. What have you done that you would consider a failure? Maybe it was a bad divorce. Maybe it was an affair. Or maybe you had an illegitimate baby. Well, I submit to you today, there's no illegitimate kids, but maybe some illegitimate parents. They didn't ask to be here. Whatever it is so indelibly imprinted in your mind that you feel like you failed. Maybe it was a class you took in school that caused you not to graduate on time. Or maybe you tried to pass the bar but failed on numerous occasions. And I'm not talking about the do drop in either. Or maybe it was a test you needed that granted you a license to perform a specific job. And on a spiritual level, maybe you failed our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Or maybe something in the sports arena that makes you feel like a, a failure. But no, not alone, because Peter, in this text, appeared to be a failure. You know, in raising my son, I would always tell him that a true character of a man is not how you act when you stand tall. Everything is well then, but how you act when you fall. See, the rooster crowed and Peter remembered. He remembered only six hours earlier how cocky he was, had been, and how confident he was about his own strength, how sure of his own ability. And if you think about it, as a Christian, if we rely on our own ability, well, we've already failed. The sound of the rooster was an awakening of our failure. And it's a reminder of us all that we have blown it. As the foul words flew out of his mouth, somewhere in the distance, a rooster is singing and crowing. cock a doodle doo From foul words to a foul crowing, everything in the air was just foul. What do you do when it seems like all hope appears lost? Someone this morning is feeling, a fa feeling like a failure for something you did in the past or something you may have done most recently. But for Peter, it got worse. It says in verse 61 says, and the Lord turned and looked upon Peter, which was a reminder of what the Lord told him. That unforgettable sound was a reminder of his failure. I want to know what sounds remind you of your failures. See, not only did Peter experience an unforgettable sound, but he also experienced an unforgettable sight. Have you ever been there, stunned or stopped in your tracks by the language of a look? 
Well, while growing up, if I were in public when I was a kid, sometimes mama just had to just cut eye and give you that look. I know I ain't by myself this morning. I knew what that look meant. Boy, if you don't stop doing what you're doing, I'm going to come out of this choir stand. My mother was a pianist. I'm going to stop playing this piano. I'm going to come down there and say to you what I said a couple of weeks ago at midweek service, that if I did it real and kept doing it and acting a fool, mama would take the board of education and apply it to my seat of knowledge, and you can hear my commencement address all through the neighborhood. <laughs> and I know I ain't by myself. Can I get an amen? <laughs> The Lord Jesus looked at Peter, and again, Peter remembered the words Jesus had spoke to him. But don't be so hard on Peter, because some of us fail Jesus, because we don't want to be seen carrying our Bibles at work. They're hid away in our desk. They're not out from it in display. Hello, somebody. We won't pray out loud if we had certain restaurants in the public. We just say, just fold our hand, close our eye. And don't let us be doing something dirty. We don't want you to even know we're a Christian. That look was convicting. Some look say, come. Some look say, don't move. Some look say, you fail miserably. Jesus did not say a word because his word had already been spoken. And one thing I know about Jesus, he don't have to repeat himself. His look said it all. He looked. Peter felt, I told you. You've heard those phrases once or twice in your life, I'm sure. Mama and daddy. Or a good friend of yours said, I tried not, but I told you. I told you not to hang around that crowd. I told you not to stay out or stay on that side of the town. I told you don't stay out that late. I told you can be harmful and helpful. And by P Peter's expression, it can also be haunting. Jesus does not say a word, but his look was one that appeared to be disappointing. Jesus wanted Peter to look at him, but he could not bear to look at Jesus in his face, realizing that his action was one of failure. Because of the sight, Jesus in the text said, Peter, remember the word of the Lord? He said unto him, before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice or three times. And in my mind, each denial destroyed every year he spent with Jesus. The text also says, and Peter went out and wept bitterly. Oh, an unforgettable sight. Look at Jesus' face. Black. Blue. Eyes almost swollen shut. His cheeks bruised and swollen. Blood trickling from his lips. Yes, I know it's in the dead of the night, but Peter could see him, and Jesus could see Peter. He didn't see the bruises on God's face. He saw the blaring of his eyes. And the piercing eyes affected Peter deeply. See, that's not the only unforgettable sight. But now, as a result, look at Peter. Went away crying like a baby. And in the original language, the word is one of poignant grief. You ever cried like a baby because you're experiencing failure? Peter ran away not because he was a coward like so many theologians and commentaries suggest. Peter was not a coward. Peter ran away because he fell in the very face of Jesus. And his heart was broken. Now, I've lived long enough to know a broken heart can make any man cry like a newborn baby. 
How do I know? Because the word for bitter means affecting one's emotions and distressing all the way to the feelings. Peter did not care about what he felt about himself. He cared what Jesus thought about him. In a word to the theologians, if Peter was a coward, he would not have pulled out his knife to start a midnight brawl in the olive. After all, I don't see any other disciples in the area. Not only was this look convicting, but it was one of compassion. Because Jesus knew his weakness, but Peter was not aware of his own weakness. That look said, Peter, without me, you can do nothing. And that's a word for someone this morning. You've been trying to do it all on your own, but without God, you can do nothing. The reason you feel like a failure is because you've been trying to do it all by yourself. Peter, tears are good. T Peter, tears are good if they lead to a new devo devotion to serve the Lord, when a new devotion to him is needed. We know that Judas wept too, but his tears led to suicide. Peter's tears led him to repentance and ultimate service. Peter's tears signified the breaking of his heart. The psalmist says in 51 and 17, a broken and contrite heart, O Lord, will you not despise? We must do two things with failure. One is live with it, and the other is learn from it. You know, it's been said one reason that God created time was so that we had a place to bury the failures of the past. We must learn to treat failure as a friend, not a foe. You want something to tweet? Tweet that. Failure is good. It's the fertilizer of success, a, gr a great coach once said. He said, everything I've learned about coaching, I've learned in the room of failure. See, failure as a, see failure as a fresh opportunity, not your final defeat. Have successful failures, not fail successes. Do failure as momentary, not monumental. Bruce Lee said it this way, do not pray for an easy life, pray for the strength to endure a difficult one. Arguably the best basketball player that ever played the game says, I got cut from a high school team. I've missed more than 9,000 shots in my career. I've lost almost 300 games and in 26 occasions I've been entrusted to take the game winning shot and I missed. I have fell over and over again in my life, and that is why I am successful. My name is Michael Jordan. At one time, I was a, a home run king and also the strikeout king. My name is Babe Ruth. They named a candy bar after me. Her childhood was frightful and filled with horrible abuse and poverty. But like most successful people, they don't dwell on it too much. She says, I don't think of myself as a poor, deprived ghetto girl who made good. I think of myself as somebody from an early age knew if I did not quit, I could do great things. My name is Oprah Winfrey. I had a speech impediment and difficulties as a child and was once even thought of to be mentally retarded. I failed and rebelled against my school's learning. I tried to get into a technical school, but I failed. But I kept on trying. Finally, as the years passed on and I kept on trying, I earned my PhD. And, with, and I also won a Nobel Prize for physics and was known as a leading theorist uh, when it comes to uh, modern day physics. My name is Albert Einstein. The last one was a master of a trial and error. As a child, I was told I was dumb and, to, and told by my teachers I would never be a success. He says, I've never failed. I've just found 10,000 ways to do it the wrong way. <laughs> what did you fail, mister? What did you do? He said, you see, Bert, I was trying to create the light bulb. My name is Thomas Edison. Oh, I don't have time to permit to tell you about Ludwig von Beethoven or Abraham Lincoln. Go read it for yourself. What do they all have in common is this. 
They were willing to go from failure to failure without losing enthusiasm. That's because that's the definition of success. And that's because failure don't come from falling down. Failure comes from not getting up. Proverbs 24 and 16 says, for a just man falls seven times and rises again. See, he learned how to control failure before contra failure controls you. This was an unforgettable sight, it was a reminder of his feelings. Not only did the text reveal unto us an unforgettable sound, not only did the text reveal to us an unforgettable sight, but the last we see is an unforgettable savior. Jesus was now left alone, but what he did was so unforgettable that Sunday after Sunday, every week and every month, every year, God's pulpiteers, homiletical heavyweights, and ecclesiastical engineers stand tall to tell the story of what happened some 2,000 plus years ago. History was his story, and that is what it is, his story goes something like this. He came down through 40 and two generations, which we cannot forget. He took a nine month nature ride in the belly of a virgin. And that too, we cannot forget. At the age of 12, he went toe to toe with the, the potentates and rabbis of today. That we cannot forget. His story is that at the age of 30, he showed back up on the scene. And he started to healing the sick giving sight to the blind, unstopping deaf, deaf ear, because it, he was an unforgettable savior. He didn't stop there. He put morticians out of business by raising the dead and disrupting funeral processions. He was an unforgettable savior. After Peter ran away, they bounced Jesus from courtroom to courtroom, trying to find fault with him, and we cannot forget you know the rest of the story. Yonder he goes, beat down, bruised from head to toe, body broken and torn, looking like truly he's a failure. They nailed him to the cross. And even though he looks bad on Friday, looks like he had failed. It looks bad on Saturday. Looks like he had failed because death had a hold on him. But a songwriter said some time ago, we fall down, but we get back up because the saint is just a sinner who fell down and got back up again, which means failure is not final. And that's because bright early on Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hands. And we're still telling an unforgettable story about an unforgettable savior. And one of the first things as I go to my seat, that happened after the resurrection. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Siloam, came to the tomb to anoint Jesus' body. The Bible says in Mark chapter 16, verses 1 through 7, when they got there, the stone was already rolled away. And they saw a young man dressed in a long white garment. And paraphrase, he says, don't be afraid. Why you look for Jesus among the dead, among the living? But go your way. He says, tell his disciples and Peter that he will meet them in Galilee. But John 23 through 6 says it this way. The disciples ran to the tomb and they outran Peter. But when Peter got to the tomb, he said, move out of the way because he sent for me. He knew that God had forgiven him of all his sins. He knew that Jesus never gave up on him. Peter did more for the kingdom after he fell than he did before he fell. I go to my seat when I tell you, don't quit when you fail because we serve an unforgivable Savior that has not given up on you. And if he did it then, he can do it again. That's because he's a do it again Savior, an unforgivable Savior. It's a reminder of our faith. If you never felt pain, then how do you know that Jesus is a healer? If you never went through difficulties, how do you know Jesus is a deliverer? If you never had trials and tribulations, how can you call yourself an overcomer? 
If you never felt sadness, how do you know Jesus is a comforter? If you never made a mistake, how do you know that he's a forgiver? If you never have ever been broken, how do you know he can make you whole? If you never had a problem, how do you know that Jesus can solve them? If you never go through the fire, then how can you become pure? If God did not fail his son Jesus, God will not fail you because there is no failure. There is no failure. There is no failure in God. Amen, amen. The officers are preparing now. The doors of the church are now open. There may be one here under the sound of my voice that don't know or have a relationship with a man by the name of Jesus. This is your opportunity right now. Candidate for baptism by letter of Christian experience. As the choir sing, these men sing, would you come? Is there one? Failure is not final. has been extended and it is our prayer that everyone under the sound of our voice have the relationship with Christ that you know that you know. Thank you Reverend Burry for that message. Encouragement to let us know we may fall down but we can still get back up because of a man by the name of Jesus. If there's nothing else it is we're going into our Sunday school Thank you for joining us by live streaming for our worship service today. 
We are now in the process of extending an invitation in our sanctuary, but I want to also extend an invitation to you, our viewers, if you don't know Jesus Christ in the pardon of your sins, that you might get to know him today. The Bible tells us in Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10, that if thou wilt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. So if you are a non-believer and you would like to confess Jesus Christ, if you want to become a Christian today, all you have to do is confess with your mouth and believe in your heart. And it's just that simple. You are saved. Also, if you're interested in having us to pray for you, you can visit our website. There's a place there for you to submit a prayer request. Or if you're interested in becoming a member of the Friendship Baptist Church in the colony, you can also visit our website and there is a place there for you to make that request also. But most of all, thank you for joining us today via live streaming as we worship our God in spirit and in truth. May God bless you and keep you and may you have a blessed week. Thank <laughs> you.